Hello everybody, Conti here with another video. How to create an animation effect featuring falling and spinning flowers in DaVinci Resolve 17.1. Inside your edits window, go to effects library. Underneath toolbox, select effects and go to find fusion composition. Click and drag one of these to the start of your edit timeline. Using the Selection Mode tool, which you can also do by pressing A, dragging the red playhead to the end of the Fusion Composition clip enables us to identify the default value for this particular clip in our animation, which will be 5 seconds. Click, hold and drag your mouse cursor at the end of the Fusion Composition clip if you wish to alter the duration of this particular animation sequence that you are about to create. In this particular project, I will increase the duration by 5 seconds for a total video playtime of 10 seconds. Right click on the Fusion Composition clip and go to Open in Fusion page. Inside your Nodes panel, hold Shift and press Space to open up the Select Tool window. Use the search box at the bottom to find the S Star tool. Select this and go to click on Add. With the new S Star 1 node selected, hold Shift and press Space and go to select the S Render tool, which will enable DaVinci Resolve to process the shape which will make up the flowers in your animation. This should be automatically connected with a yellow arrow to S Star 1. Click and drag the grey box to the side of S Render 1 to the yellow arrow of Media Out 1 to make a connection. Select S Star 1 and go to select either the right or left view circles which appear underneath Media Out 1 when you go to hover your mouse cursor over this particular Media Out 1 node. You should then see a preview of your star appearing inside your Fusion window. With the S star node still selected, underneath Inspector and Controls, increase the number of points of your star to 8. To make the points of the star longer, Decrease depth to 0.378. To make the points more rounded like a flower shape, increase border width to 0.075. Decrease the size of the overall flower slightly by reducing width and height to 0.4 each. To change the colour of your flower shape, click on Style and double click on the colour box which appears below. The colour that we select here will be used to fill the shape at the base of our final flower graphic. This particular colour shade will also be the darkest that you apply to your flower's petals. Ensure that your saturation is roughly 220. If you wish to use a different colour shade to the dark pink that I have selected here, simply modify the hue value. Decreasing the hue value will move the colour selection icon towards the orange on the far right side. And increasing this hue value will move the colour selection tool towards the red on the left side of this gradient selection box here. In this particular example, I will apply the hexadecimal code hashtag A3166F in the HTML box here. Click OK once you have selected your colour. With your S star on one node selected, hold Shift and press Space and go to add an S Merge tool. This should automatically be connected between your S Star 1 and S Render 1 nodes using the yellow arrows. Repeat this process until you have seven S Merge nodes all together in between S Star and S Render. All should be connected via the yellow input arrows. Before inserting each new Merge node, select the latest existing Merge node on your Fusion Grid. Select S star 1, hold Ctrl and press C to copy. Use Command instead of Ctrl if you are a Mac user. Deselect S star 1, hold Ctrl and press V to paste. Connect this duplicate S star node to the green input 2 arrow of S merge 1. This will ensure that the duplicate star shape that we have created here will appear above the base that we set for our flower graphic with S star 1. With the S star duplicate node selected, go to Inspector and underneath Controls to create our next upper layer of petals for our flower. 
we first need to decrease the size of this so that it is visible above the base. Decrease width and height values by 0.05. So the width and height of the second flower layer will be 0.35. To have the petals appear in the depth of the petals in the lower flower layer, increment angle by 23. And to intensify the colour, Go to Style, double click on the colour box, increase Val to the maximum value of 255. We will decrease Saturation by 40, in this case here to 181. Click OK. Right click on your latest S star node and select Copy. Deselect your duplicate star node and hold Ctrl and press V to paste. Connect this latest S star node to S merge 2. Continue copying and pasting your latest star node, connecting each one to each merge node all the way up to merge 5, leaving merge 6 and merge 7 without a star node. For each star node, Decrease width and height by 0.05, increment angle by 23, and decrease the colour saturation by 40 for each duplicate node as you go along. Set the colour shade applied to the S star node connected to merge 5 as white. Now to create the pollen with a slight side shadow effect. Deselect your S star node, hold shift and press space and go to add the S ellipse node. Connect this new node to the green input arrow of merge 6. This first ellipse node will make up the pollen shadow. Referring back to the last star node, underneath controls in inspector, the width and height were both 0.15. To ensure that there is a consistent reduction in size with each of the flower layers, we will again subtract 0.05 from this latest value to make up the ellipse shape of the pollen. Select the S ellipse 1 node and set the width and height to 0.1. Select Style, double click on Colour and go to select Black. Click OK. To add a fade effect to the shadow, decrease Alpha to 0.2. Copy the same ellipse node and go to paste another ellipse node alongside your disconnected merge 7 node. Connect this duplicate ellipse node to the green arrow of merge 7. With the duplicate ellipse node selected, go to Inspector and choose Style. Increase Alpha to 1. Now double click on the colour box and add the following hexadecimal code to make up the pollen yellow shade, hashtag FFE622. Click OK. Select the first ellipse node which makes up your shadow. In order to shift this to the side, we must modify the control variables. Go to Inspector and select Controls. To make the shadow appear past the bottom right side of your pollen, increase X offset to 0.005 and decrease Y offset to minus 0.005. Now to add the falling and spinning animation effects to your flowers. Hold shift and press space and go to add a P emitter node. In order to be able to connect S render to P emitter, ensure that the P emitter node is selected. Go to inspector and under style, change style from point to bitmap. Disconnect S render 1 from media out 1 by clicking once on the line closest to the yellow arrow beside media out 1. Connect the grey box of S render 1 to the new yellow input arrow beside P emitter 1. With P emitter 1 selected, hold shift and press space and go to add a P turbulence tool. Hold shift and press space once again. 
and go to add a P render tool, which will enable DaVinci Resolve to process all the falling and spinning flowers in your video. Connect P render one to media out one via the yellow input arrow. Select P emitter one. To have the flowers fall from the top of your canvas, zoom out on your fusion preview window using the percentage settings in the top left corner of media out one. Scroll up on your preview window to see a section above your canvas. Go to region under inspector and change region from sphere to line. Set start X offset to 0 0.5, start Y offset to 0 0.4, end X offset to minus 0 0.5 and end Y offset to 0 0.4. This will ensure that any falling flowers don't make any sudden appearances towards the top of your screen as your video is playing and will instead fall from the top side of your canvas into view. Go to controls. To reduce the number of flowers falling on screen, decrease number to 0 0.3. And to ensure that the flowers fall all the way down to the bottom, increase lifespan to 200. And to add variety to the starting position of the flowers, change position variance to 0 0.1. Select velocity. To ensure that the flowers fall at a gentle speed, increase velocity slightly to 0 0.05. To have the flowers fall downwards, decrease angle to minus 45. When the video is previewed, the flowers will fall towards the bottom right corner. However, what we can do to change the direction to make it look like the flowers are falling downwards and towards the viewer, we can decrease angle Z to minus 90. Select Spin. Change Z to 3 to add a gentle rotation animation to each of your flowers. Now go to Style. Select Size Controls. To increase the size of the flowers which appear on screen, increase size from 0 0.1 to 0 0.4. Again, for variation purposes, increase size variance to 0 0.1, which will affect the dimensions of each flower on your screen. In the Size Over Life grid, select the node on the left side and drag this down by roughly 3 quarters from the halfway line to the bottom of the grid. Then select the node on the far right side and drag this to the top right corner which will increase the size of your flowers throughout your animation creating the illusion that they are flowing towards the viewer as they fall downwards. Now go to select P Turbulence. To have the flowers shift left and right slightly as they fall decrease X Strength to 0 0.07. To avoid any significant movement upwards Decrease Y strength to 0 0.02. And to avoid the illusion of the flowers moving closer or away from the viewer, decrease Z strength to 0. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that video was useful to you. If you enjoyed the content and wish to be notified about future uploads on this channel, please like, share, and subscribe. Join me soon for another video. Take care.